Friday was a very prayerful day. And one of the things that the Lord brought to mind was a sister in Christ, her gentle and humble spirit, her heart of forgiveness and her love. And I said in my spirit, Lord, I'd sure love to talk to her. Early the next morning, guess who called? <laughs> we began talking and sharing and praising him. And she told me of a dream that she had when she was but 15. I know why the Lord placed each other on our hearts. He causes all things to work together for the good of those who love him and who are called according to his purpose. The dream that she told me of has stayed in my heart. She gave me permission to share it with you. She was walking down a familiar road and saw a house. It was a house belonging to someone she used to know. Someone remarked, Who will go into that house and get those people? Who will save them and bring them out? No one wanted to go in there. But my sister said, I'll go. And she went in. And when she went in, she saw that there were snakes everywhere. They were coiled up and they were hissing. They were on the table. They were on the floors. They were on the furniture. And they struck at her and they bit her. And she flung her arms. She felt the pain. But she looked at her arms and there were no marks. She was not harmed by them. And when she came out of that house, she says, I got them. I got them all out. She said there was one woman in there who was so mean and ugly, hurling insults and so unkind. She turned her back to my sister and she was walking out. But as she was walking out, my sister saw her spirit inside her. And her spirit inside her said, please help me. Please help me. That was the end of her dream. The Lord has placed each of us on this earth for a purpose. He brought each of us here for His glory, not our own. We are here to grow in the grace and knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. We are here to do the Father's will. We are here to love Him with all of our heart and soul and mind and strength. We are here to love others as ourselves. We are here for such a time as this. There are those who do not have the knowledge of truth. He speaks this to our shame. There are those in my circle of life that I am appointed to go in and go after. It is the same for you. It is the same for her. It is the same for everyone else. And he asks, who will go in and go after them? And so many aren't willing. But in her love and her genuineness, she says, I will go. That is what our Father wants from us. The snakes and the scorpions are all around us. And though we may feel pressure and pain, they will not harm us. There is no safer place to be in all this world than in the center of our Father's will. Let us go after them and let us do it in His Spirit, in His power, and in His might, and in His love. Ephesians 6.10 says, Be strong in the Lord and in the strength of His might. Put on the full armor of God so that you will be able to stand firm against the schemes of the devil. And he showed her and he is showing us through that woman that she saw so hateful and mean on the outside, but her spirit begging for help, begging to be freed. That our struggle is not against flesh and blood, but against the rulers, against the powers, against the world forces of this darkness, against the spiritual forces of wickedness in the heavenly places. Someone loved you. Someone loved me enough to pray for us. Someone cared enough. Someone loved us enough to go after us. Jesus is coming. The harvest is now. The harvest for us will go on until he takes us. Whether we go to meet him in the clouds or taste death here on earth, we do the work he has given us until we are called home. We are busy about the Father's will, not busy about our will in the Father's name. Matthew 25, 45, who then is the faithful and sensible slave whom his master put in charge of his household to give them their food at the proper time? Blessed is that slave whom his master finds so doing when he comes.